When it comes to medical technology, one of the new kids on the block is personalised medicine. One of the main reasons that's come about is as the result of mapping of the human genome. This massive project started in 1990 and was completed in 2000. That was amazingly fast when you consider that the structure of DNA was only discovered by Drs. Watson and Crick in 1953. What they learned was that all our genetic code is locked into two spiralling chains of nucleic acids coiled around a single axis, then coiled upon itself and stuffed into the nucleus of almost every cell of our body. Segments of th this DNA are called genes. Now, there was a lot of guessing that went on during the hum Human Genome Project about how many genes the human would have. Scientists assumed that since we were the superior species on this planet, having evolved beyond any other plant or animal, we must have more genes, right? Surprise! Instead of the expected 100,000 genes, we only had 25,000, which was fewer than even the humble grape at 30,000. Now, as more of the story unfolded, we learned that instead of the bits of DNA between genes being junk, this was actually where our gene switches were held and they controlled whether the gene could even be read. Now, let's say that this strand of DNA is a copy of my own DNA and it contains the gene that controls production of an enzyme called methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase or MTHFR for short. And this other strand over here is your gene. Now, what we see, and, and by the way, this controls how much folate, how folate is, sorry, is metabolized in our body. And what we can see is that everything is the same except for this one nucleotide pair. On one side it's purple and orange, and on the other it's green and yellow. The slight difference of just one nucleotide pair, that slight difference makes me more susceptible to depression, heart disease, Alzheimer's and dementia. And it means that I need higher dietary folic acid or a nutritional supplement to be sure that I have enough folic acid for the heart, the brain, the blood cells and the immune system, which is of course pretty fundamental for good health. And if I were to be pregnant, I would need a lot more for the normal formation of my unborn child. Now you might be wondering how frequent this single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP is in the United States population. It actually occurs in 10 to 15 percent of people. That's less than one in 10. Now this discovery of SNPs has spawned a whole new field called nutrigenomics. So watch this space. Want more? Visit us at hopetv.org slash go healthy.